How's it going, everyone? I'm Chaya Connor, and that's right, we're here for week five for the Indigo League of Legends today. Your San Francisco Swampers are taking on Isaiah or the Minnesota Munchasses. We are at two wins, two losses. We suffered another loss last week to the Venus Venusaurus. If you have not seen that battle, be sure to head it up on my playlist. I also posted my analysis video for this week as well, which was like 16 to 17 minutes. Really long, but I really wanted to prepare for this battle because we have to get a win for this week for next week, and for week 7, the final battle, before the season ends, and to the playoffs, which is really exciting. I'm really hoping that we can make it to the playoffs. It will be a huge achievement for myself as a battler and for the team I'm currently coaching, the San Francisco Swampers. And this is what we have here. I hope you all enjoy this awesome battle. Let's get rolling. Okay. So we are going to start out with my Thornton. I've decided to use my offensive Ferrothorn as opposed to my defensive one, just for purposes there. He starts off with a Eager Slash. I knew he was going for Hidden Power Fire, and I also knew I could live it, barring a critical hit. That means so we can get up our Stealth Rocks. Here, I'm expecting him to go for another Hidden Power Fire, but he goes for Head Smash. That was a really good move by Isaiah. So he's able to blast away Phoenix, my Talon Flame, and he gets to not do anything because he takes it out in one move. I was really sad to see that. He obviously predicted me to go into my Talon Flame the way I did. I really should have gone into my Gastrodon, Sephira, which, for those who don't know, Sephira is my offensive Gastrodon which I recently trained up. That's pretty cool. I really should have gone into this thing initially. Just saying. I didn't know what to expect from the e Electros. I was expecting him a Giga Drain or a Crunch. He goes for Crunch, which actually does not do anything, which is kind of surprising. He hits my Flygon, but here I go for U-Turn with it. I was expecting the Gardevoir to come and take a Draco Meteor if he was predicting that, but I predicted him to do that, so nice predictions there. I'm able to go into my Gengar for free. He goes into Cloyster. I don't want that thing to set up, so we're going to Mega Evolve here and go for Shadow Ball. I'm really lucky to get my Stealth Hops up because those are going to come into huge play during this match. Here I go for, for a Shadow Ball. And I think Isaiah was expecting a Sludge Bomb or something, but no, I go for Shadow Ball, and I get hit by a Pursuit. I was hoping that the second Shadow Ball that I went for would take out the Scavalier, but I must have gotten a minimum damage roll, which is okay. I mean, I do get some damage to my Gengar, but that's just, you know, I was sad to see that, but, you know, it's okay. He went for King Shield, I'm not really sure. I was expecting him to go for a Shadow Sneak, because that's priority, it would bypass the speed of my Mega Gengar, but he went for another King Shield. I feel like he's misplaying his Ega Slash a lot during this match, besides the fact that he went for Head Smash earlier. That's the only best play that he used for Ega, for Ega Slash there. But, you know, that's just, I feel like he's been playing with the King Shields kind of wrong in this battle. So we got some information about this Mega Gardevoir. I was really surprised that he brought Mega Gengar, or Mega Gardevoir, excuse me. Wow. I, I was expecting Mega Garchomp, but he didn't bring it. So, that's, eh, you know, you have to prepare for either one of the Megas, of course. Anyway, so, I wanted to see how much the... Psychic does, and it's a Kyuhi KO, which is like, oh, okay, that's good information to know. I get a freeze here. That's huge, because now this gives me a choice to do whatever I feel like. In this scenario, I'm going to go for recover. To get my HP back, I was expecting him to switch, 
That's okay by me. I even, I even this ghastly guy to take a few special moves from Forges. I wasn't sure what kind of set the Forges is, but we will get some information about it. Here, I am forcing him to go for aromatherapy. Now that means that the Mega Gardevoir is thawed out from the frozen status condition. I kind of play poorly for the next few turns, I have to admit, which are going to come into huge, which is going to come into play here, excuse me. I had to say it correctly there. I make a few mistakes. I go for Earth Power multiple times, and I basically let this Forges set up basically for free. I was really stupid of me to do that kind of play there. I really should have gone into my Mega Gengar. You'll see why in a few more turns, because you'll see how much a Sludge Bomb would do. So we stay in here, and I eat a Moon Blast. I take it, and that's how I EV my Gastrodon to take a plus one Moon Blast and do it really comfortably, I gotta say. But now I'm in, the, I'm in this situation where I have to sacrifice someone because I don't want to sacrifice my Gastrodon yet. He's going to be very important. So we're going to death fogger my Thornton Ferrothorn. And while that is a kind of a sad moment for my Ferrothorn, he did do some crucial work in this match, setting up entry hazards and all that. So thank you Thornton for that. Now here's where I'm like, okay, I'm hoping to get a critical hit or something. And that wasn't a critical hit. That was how much it did regularly. And I hold on with 1 HP with my Shadow Lark from Mega Gengar. That was huge because if I lost my Gengar, I think I would have lost the match. Now unfortunately, I don't take out Forges right there. With that sliver of health there, I was hoping he would not protect right here. But he does not go for protect if he had it. He really should have gone for that. But we take out Forges. If he taking out my Gengar guys, I think I would have lost the match. I gotta say, that was the most crucial part of the match in my opinion. That was huge. So expecting another, you know, Shadow Sneak. Because I think he's holding on to it. He didn't want to reveal it earlier, so I'm assuming he has it right now for me. But he goes for another King Shield. I'm really surprised by that. And now I'm forcing him to switch out again. Those Stealth Offs are going to come into play here because he takes a lot of damage from not only the Stealth Offs, but from the Flamethrower from Flygon. Now I am very fortunate to survive a Ice Shard. I believe Ice Shard is four times weak to Flygon, I gotta say. If I'm wrong, then you can correct me in the comments, but you know, I survived it and that's what counts. So that means that my Flygon is going to go for a little bit of a rampage, going for a couple of flamethrowers, take out Mega Gardevoir, really awesome. And now I'm going to go into Sephira once again, goes for another key shield that E Slash does, and I'm just like, okay, this is, I don't know if that's the best play to go for King Shield. He really should have gone for a Shadow Ball. Because if he went for Shadow Ball on the upcoming switch to my Gastrodon, I would lose my Gastrodon. So, I... so basically what happens, I am going to survive a Shadow Ball and recover up. So, all I'm saying is that Isaiah would have he should have gone for a Shadow Ball when I went into my Gastrodon. That's all. And this scenario, instead we're going to KO the Aegis Slash and now we have just the E Electros. So I knew we could hopefully get a victory here. Because I still have my Mega Gengar to clean up and also my Flygon. So here I'm expecting this punch to KO me, to KO me if I can say it correctly. And I managed to live with 1 HP again, which is hilarious. And I don't take him out with a Surf, so this means that this Electros is Assault Vested. 
So we lose Gastrodon, but like I said, we have our Mega Gengar, Shadow Lark. Go for SpongeBob, and we can win the match. So we get another win, guys. That's awesome. So now our ratio is three wins and two losses. We are hoping to make it to the playoffs this year. I hope we are, and I'm really excited. So now we're going to focus on week number six, whom I'm facing the Atlanta Farfetch'd. There will be an analysis video for that, so stay tuned for that, and I will see you guys all next time. Alright, goodbye, Shiners.